Welcome to my kitchen. Okay, this dish is our last dish for the retro week and the meal prep. I don't know which recipe is more of a classic, but I think this one is an ultimate classic. Peas and carrots. Now I know you can buy a frozen bag of peas and carrots and be done with it. But making them from scratch really does pay off. The flavor of the dish is absolutely worth a little bit of extra time. And with a few updates, it really does take it to the next level. The addition of the ginger and onions give it a depth that lightens the dish and brings the freshness of the vegetables out. Okay, so we're starting with the carrots. Give them a wash if you think they need one. I cut the ends off and I peel the carrots. We can set them aside for a bit before they get cut up into small pieces. The carrots are the most labor intensive part of this recipe. Now I used about two pounds of carrots and about eight ounces of peas. This made a good half and half mixture. Another nice thing about this dish is that the ingredients are generally inexpensive. So you can have a nice side that's not expensive at all. As we finish up peeling the carrots, next we're gonna move on to the ginger. Nothing fancy here. I just use my paring knife to peel the ginger. Okay, there's a lot of other ways to do this, but I find this is the easiest way for me. We're not doing anything special. We're just gonna peel it and then we're gonna cut it into quarters lengthwise. You don't need a lot of ginger. This is about an inch and a half long and about a half inch round piece. I found this amount was enough to give the peas and carrots just the slightest hint of heat, a nice little zing. Ginger can be very spicy, so you have to be careful. This was a perfect amount. It was not overbearing and it wasn't hot or spicy. Next, we move on to the onions. And again, we're not using a large amount. The peas and carrots are the star of this dish. The onions and the ginger, they're just the backup singers. The onion is also a sweet onion, which is slightly milder in flavor. I prefer the sweet onions over the yellow onions. Yellow onions can be a bit stronger and a little bit bitter sometimes. And again, you want your pieces to be the same size as the peas. Everything is based on the size of the peas because that's the size that we can't change. So we're going to adjust everything to fit the peas. While we're waiting for the pan to heat up, we can move on to cutting up the carrots. Another chance for a little zen moment. Another thing I like about this dish is the fresh flavors that really shine through. It went great with the pork chops and the other dishes from the week. But I also had them cold in a salad. They showed up as a snack too one afternoon. Once we get the onions in the pan, you want to cook them just for a few minutes by themselves. This will help their flavor develop and some of the sweetness come out. This also gives you a chance to finish cutting up your carrots. You may want to turn the burner down a bit. You want the onions to just start to get golden in color. You don't want them to burn at all or get too brown. It's amazing that such a simple dish like peas and carrots can have so many steps in such a short amount of time that really elevates the dish to a next level. That's another great thing about cooking. Once the onions have a nice golden brown color, you can go ahead and add the carrots. This is also where we're going to add our salt and pepper. This will be the only spices that we're using here other than the ginger, which goes in after the carrots have cooked for a while. We also wanna add some water to the carrots so they can simmer gently and start to soften. By adding the water to the carrots, they can cook slowly and get it nice and tender without burning. You want them just at a very gentle simmer. You'll wanna cover the pan and you may wanna turn the burner down to low at this point. You wanna check them after about three or four minutes. They should be about halfway done at this point. Then we're gonna add the ginger. I didn't wanna add the ginger right away because I didn't want it to get too spicy. Like I said, ginger can be very spicy and the less time in the pan, the less likely it is to get out of control. We want the carrots to cook just a little bit longer before we add the peas. About another three or four minutes. Keep an eye on them. Check to make sure that there's plenty of water in the pan. The peas won't take too long to cook, about three minutes. I don't like them overdone or mushy. 
You want the carrots almost done before you add your peas. We can go ahead and add the peas, give them a stir, and you can see how, how much water you have left in the pan and how well done the carrots are. There should be enough water left in the pan to cook the peas. If there's not, add just a little bit more. You don't want to drown them, but they need some moisture in there so they can steam. Once the peas are done, you can turn your burner off and take out your ginger. I like to store my food in glass containers. It just makes it easier to see what's in the container, and the containers are definitely easier to clean. This dish was a perfect way to complete the meal prep. A cup of peas is about 75 calories. They added a bit of freshness to lighten up the meal. It was a great combination for sure. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this recipe and I hope you give it a try. Let me know if you have any questions.